Okay, hi there YouTube people. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see me or not, but I'm here if, if you can't see me. Um, so, this one is actually, for, I'm buzzing just now because, um, yeah, England have just beat Sweden in the World Cup and we're through to the semi-final of the World Cup for the first time um, since 1990. And yes, I am old enough to well remember that one. So, yeah, buzzing at the moment about the footy. Great stuff. But, uh, back to more important things. Music. Um, so yeah, I've had a couple of requests for a video just to show how I've now incorporating the, uh, the Deluge, a uh, little controller synth, sampler, whatever, um, into my setup. It's basically very similar to, um, I did a series of videos, I think, on my live setup update in June um, of this year. We're now into July. Um, so everything's very similar. I've had a slight little move around of stuff. Um, and this has basically replaced the Electribe. Um, so what I'm basically doing is I've turned actually the internal sync MIDI sync off for everything because um, I don't want the stuff to play anymore, um, which is the way I, that's the way I was doing it before because I've, I've realised that the easiest way just to sequence everything is to do everything from here because I'm not limited to um, length of bars and so on that you are obviously with the TR8 and, and everything else. Um, I'm still taking, um, I've got the MX-1 set up in auto sync. Um, so when I press play on here, that starts the deluge playing, but nothing else is playing. And then everything else is going to be sequenced off here. So it keeps all my sequences in one place, uh, which makes life very, very easy. Um, and it also means I've got all the sequences in here should I wish to play live, and I can back them up onto SD cards and, and so on. So I'm not going to go through the audio routing. The audio routing is very, very straightforward, and that's pretty much as it was in the previous video, uh, in, in the June video. Um, let's just go through the MIDI routings uh, to start with. So starting off with the MX-1, um, and somebody, I can't remember what it was, I'm sure somebody commented that the MX-1 doesn't have MIDI through on it, and I'm, pre I've not, I'm pretty sure it does, because I'm sure all the Roland stuff has MIDI through on it. I think you just need to turn it on in the settings. So just check your settings. Um, because I'm sure that the, uh, every every other Roland uh, bit of gear has MIDI through, so I'm sure I'm sure the MX-1 does. So, um, everything's pretty much connected together just with, um, mostly with 5-pin MIDI cables, apart from some of the Roland stuff, which is over um, USB. So, yeah, starting with the MX-1, the TR-8 is, con is connected to the MX-1 um, via USB. Um, as is, so that's going into USB 1, the System 8 is going into USB 2, and the TBO 3 down here is going into USB, US, yeah, USB 3. So there, that's the USB stuff which is then passes stuff through, so it has got MIDI through because it's passing stuff through the MX1 in, into those, those things. Uh, what I'm then doing is from the MX1, I'm taking a standard 5-pin MIDI cable out, and I've got to have this in my trusty notebook because I can never remember it. Um, and that is going out of the MX1 to the MIDI in of the Deluge. Okay. And then the MIDI out from here is going to the standard MIDI in on the TR8. Okay. On the MIDI out of the TR8, I've got a cheap MIDI splitter. Again, if you've watched my other videos, you will know I'm using these cheap MIDI splitters. They're about two or three quid off eBay, and that's going to give me two outs from the TR8. Um, so one of those outputs from the TR8 is coming to the MIDI log, and that's kind of like the end of that MIDI flow of information to there, because that doesn't have MIDI through. The second output from the TR8 is coming into the System 8. Um, I've then got on the MIDI out of the System 8 another MIDI splitter cable. One of those is going over to the Volker base, which I think is off camera, which is off there, which I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not using my Volker as much at the moment. They may be destined for eBay, I don't know. I'll be sad to see the base go. I don't use the keys much, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, yeah, MIDI splitter from the System 8. One is going to the Volker base over there. Again, that's the end of that MIDI flow, because that doesn't have MIDI through. And the second one is going to the MIDI in of the TB03. Um, at the TBO3, I've then got another splitter cable. So again, that's giving me two outputs. One of those is going to the Volker keys, which again is off camera over there. And the second one is going to um, a MIDI splitter little unit. I think that cost me about 25 quid. I mean, it's hidden down there, so I can't show it here. 
it's a fairly basic thing, but it basically it, it splits. Um, it's, it's a MIDI through box, uh, basically. Um, I know Kenton do one, uh, which aren't that cheap. Uh, I picked this up for about 25 quid, I think it was, and it works really well. So that's got one input, and then it's got, I think it's got five outputs on it, and I'm using four of those at the moment. So yeah, the output from the TB03 is going to the input of that MIDI through box, and then I'm taking one of the outputs to the Micro Brute, one of the outputs to the MS20, one of the outputs to the MB33 here, and then another output is going into the uh, MIDI CV um, interface on the modular on there. I can get rid of my book now, now I've rooted gone through all of that. So the way that works is basically everything kind of talks to each other. So I now have access to control any bit of hardware I want from here. So if we just go onto the MIDI uh, section on the Deluge, and I'll just go through the uh, the MIDI channels. So the MS1 is on, um, let me just put it into keyboard mode so I can play a few bits. So the MX, MS1, not the MX1, the MS1 down here. Okay, so that's the sound of the MS1 at the moment. So hopefully you can hear this, I'm just recording it off the camera audio. But Okay, that's on channel one, so I'm now playing that from here. Okay, so I can sequence that from here as necessary. Channel two is the MB33. Channel three, so we're on to three on here, is the, is the TBO3. Um, channel four is the modular, I think. Yeah. Okay. Channel five is the mini log. So all you gotta do is just obviously set your gear to whatever channel you want it to receive MIDI information on. Um, channel 6 is the System 8, so I'll just change the patch on here. Okay, it's controlling that on there. The great thing is all the deluge is that we can, you can send out, you can alert, <coughs> sorry, you can send out MIDI CC, yeah, MIDI CC information as well. So when I'm writing a song, um, I can automate all this as well. So it's basically, it's, it's like this is Ableton Live controlling all the hardware. And this, this bit of gear is absolutely amazing. It's fantastic. Um, channel seven, I've got nothing on there at the moment. Channel eight is the Micro Brute. Um, nothing on nine. 10, if I go on to, uh, back onto kit mode is the TR8, so I can, um, uh, I need to come out of scale mode for this because it works better that way. Uh, what are we on? So if we start down on C1, so that's the kick drum. Okay, so that is now playing the kick drum of the TR8. Okay, we've got all the sounds as we go up there. Uh, nothing on 11, 12, I don't think. 10 is free, no, nothing on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16. So they're all spare ones. Um, obviously that gives me a bit of flexibility then to add more gear if necessary. I think I've probably got enough, but you know, you've never got enough gear. Um, obviously I'm not using the, the Volkers at the moment, so I may bring those in to sequence this as well. I'm also not using the Electribe at the moment. The Electribe is sat over there, feeling very sorry for itself, gathering dust. Um, and I'm not sure whether to sell it or keep it, because there are some nice sounds on it, but we'll see. I might just incorporate that within here and sequence it all from this, because this is now the... Uh, main control center of everything, both for live and for um, writing and recording. So let's ju I'll just, I'll get a, a very basic kind of little song groove sort of thing going. Let me just. Okay, so just checking, I did press record on the camera and I have, obviously if you're watching this, then I did press record, but anyway. It's all right, I'm still flustered by the football. England in the semi-final of the World Cup just doesn't happen. So, it's, yeah, whatever. Right, so let's just get a little groove going. So, the reason I wanted to use the MX-1, because um, obviously this is my mixer, um, and I wanted to sort of send the clock out to this, to the deluge, is so I can use, obviously, the, uh, the beat effects and time-based effects on here. So, if I press play on here, it starts this playing. So, there's nothing sequenced at the moment. I've got a completely blank track. So, we'll just get a basic drum part in. So, there's the kick. We also have um, 
velocity control on here so I can like make that last note a bit quieter. Hopefully you can hear that. Well, I'll stick one in there as well. So all we do to then put another track in is we're going to song mode. So that then is the TR8 track. Just press on there, we get a new track. So let's have, we'll have a bit of the MV33 in. So I'm going to put a basic. Sorry, on the wrong thing. Let's go down an octave or two. That'll do. So I've got the delay coming off. Um, Okay, so yeah, we're taking delay from the uh, the MX1 from the built-in effects from there. So that's the MP33 playing as that little thing. Um, let's have some mini log. Let's go down and up to mini channel five. And obviously I can mute the drums and salt from here. Uh, if we're in the correct mode, that is. And bring that back in. Okay, let's put another track in. Let's have some pad sounds off the system A. Eh? So we're going to go to keyboard mode for this. Okay, so we need to be on what channel are we on? Six, I think, for the. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a two bar um, pattern for that. Let's just stop it playing for a second so you can hear what I'm saying. Because um, at the moment it's this is default set to uh, one bar, so I've got to remember how to do this. Um, sorry, you've got to come out of keyboard mode. That's what it is. So I've only had this a week, so I'm still le learning it new. So uh, this is basically the length of my bar. Okay, so that's like half a bar. So that's one bar. Hopefully you can see that. And then if I Spread it out to that. That's going to give me two bars on this track. The other ones will still loop round as one bar, and this will loop round as two bars. Um, so, let's practice what I'm going to play. Well do. So just hit record because it's going through there. Okay, that's now in the memory, and obviously we can then to affect the sound. And it's that easy, right? It is so easy. You're not clicking away on a mouse um, on Ableton Live. You're pressing buttons, you're playing stuff. Um, so this thing has completely transformed um, how I work and how I play live as well. I'm going to um, do some videos on the, on the live play and things. So, Hopefully that shows you how versatile this is. I mean, I've barely scratched the surface with this. Obviously this has got its own internal sounds and samples and everything as, as, else as well. So, you know, we can write a song just on this or you can do it all with that. And then when I've got a song written on here, um, what I'll basically do is I just press play on here. Obviously I've got all the separate channels out on here. I'll just stick that into the, uh, into the computer, into Ableton Live, and it will record all the separate tracks for me. <clears throat> so I can then mix it if I wish a bit further in, in, uh, in Ableton and apply some more effects uh, in there as well. So you can just record it through in real time. You can do the whole arrangement of a song off here. That's something I might try and do in a series of videos. You just kind of start from scratch and do a whole song 
from beginning to end with all the arrangement and then record it into live and then mix it and release it hopefully. So hopefully that makes sense and that answered a few of the questions that people have, have commented on a few of the other videos. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions or comments, stick them in the box below, you know what to do. Um, if you've not already subscribed, please subscribe, share the videos around as much as you can. And if you kind of like, like acid electronic ambient sort of music, then check me out on uh, so on any digital channel really, Spotify, iTunes, Beatport, Juno, Amazon, Google, I'm on all of them. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Come on England, can we get to the final? We will see. Um, if we do, I'll do something weird on YouTube if we get to the final. And if we win, God knows what I'll do. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.